Okay, in this video we're going to talk about approximating the value of a definite integral using n rectangles. Um, so this is going to be a follow-up to kind of the general idea of um, the definition of a definite integral. But here again, again we're just approximating. So the idea is we've got some function y equals f of x. We want to find the space um, between the curve and the x-axis. Again, we need to remember that when we calculate the definite integral, if the area is above the x-axis, it'll give us a positive value. And if the area is below the x-axis, it'll give us a negative value. So we're trying to find this area. For example, the idea is maybe I could use right endpoints. So for this first interval, I would, make, I would pick the right endpoint, follow it up till it hits the graph. That'll give me a rectangle. I'll go to the next interval, make a rectangle, I'll calculate its value, and I'll, again, I'll do this for every interval, okay? So obviously the number of rectangles that you end up using is going to be somewhat arbitrary. The main idea being, though, the more rectangles you use, the better the approximation becomes. So in this problem, I want to approximate the area, the definite integral from 0 to 2 of 16 minus x squared. Remember 16 minus x squared is a parabola that's flipped upside down and has a y-intercept of 16. And I've just arbitrarily chosen four rectangles and left endpoints for my first example. So since we're going calculating the definite integral from 0 to 2, we're talking about this blue shaded in area. Okay, so that's what we need to calculate. Okay, the first thing we need to recognize is we're going to chop our rectangle up into four pieces. So what's the width of each piece? Again, well, we label the width to be delta x. Remember that's b minus a over n, b being the upper limit of integration, a being the lower limit of integration, n being the number of rectangles you use. So we'll get 2 minus 0 over 4, which is 2 fourths, or a half. So that means if we chop this up into four pieces, each interval has width 1 half, so the first point will be 0.5, then 1, then I'll have 1.5, and then the x-coordinate of 2. Since I'm using left endpoints, again, when I look at the first interval, I'm going to use the, the left endpoint. I'll make a rectangle. I'll do it for the second interval. I'll make a rectangle. I'll do it for the third interval. Make a rectangle. And for the fourth interval, I'll also make a rectangle. So we have to calculate the values of these four rectangles, and that'll be an approximation. In this case, just by the shape of the graph, notice it's going to be an over-approximation because my rectangles are going to give me a little bit outside of the region. So it's easy enough to calculate. These problems, if I can say it about anything in calculus, these are easy problems. At worst, they're going to be computationally tedious. Okay, so the area is going to be roughly equal to the area of rectangle 1 plus the area of rectangle 2 plus the area of rectangle 3 plus the area of rectangle 4. Okay, so to calculate the first rectangle, the area of it, we know that it has a width of 1 half. To get the height, the height corresponds to the y coordinate. Again, we're using the left endpoint. So we need to plug the x-coordinate of 0 into our function. And that will give us the area of the first rectangle. Now I need to figure out the area of the second rectangle. Again, the width of it is 1 half. That's our delta x value. To get, <coughs> ooh, excuse me, to get the height of the rectangle, we need to plug 1 half, or 0.5, into our formula. To get the area of the third rectangle, we'll do the same thing. Again, it has a width of 1 half. To get its height, we plug 1 into the function. And for the last one, we'll plug, again, a width of 1 half, and we'll plug 1.5 in to get that height. The only thing we really have to compute are the f of 0, f of 1 half, f of 1, and f of 1.5 values. So we'll get 1 half. Again, if you plug 0 into our function, 16 minus x squared, we'll simply get 16 plus 1 half. Now we'll plug 1 half into our function. So we'll get 16 minus 1 half squared plus 1 half. We plug 1 into our function. We'll get 16 minus 1 squared. And I'm going to run out of room. 
Um, our last rectangle will be one half, and again, all you have to do now is plug 1.5 into your function. Okay, and that'll give us the area of the fourth rectangle. So I didn't actually calculate these. Sorry, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I was a little bit lazy. Um, but this is going to be the setup. At this point, if you're taking calculus, it should just be arithmetic, and um, I have full faith that you can simplify that down. Okay, but again, this is going to be an overestimate in this case, just based, um, basically just based on the shape of the function. <clears throat> again, so using left endpoints is completely arbitrary. Um, so let me set up just maybe one other example. If I can do that real quick before my time runs out. So again, 16 minus x squared, we're going to use the same function. We'll go over to 2, so here's 16 minus x squared. Suppose now that instead of using left endpoints, we use um, midpoints from each interval. Okay, again, our, everything stays the same. There's only going to be a slight little change in what happens. Okay, so we still chop it up into four pieces. So this is 0.5, 1, 1 1.5. But now to get the heights of our rectangles, if we use midpoints, well, we just have to use the midpoint of each interval. So this would be the midpoint 0.25. This would be the midpoint 0.75. This would be the midpoint 1.25 and this would be the midpoint 1.75. So make a, a mental note of those values. I'm going to uh, erase them just so my picture doesn't get too cluttered. But again, that's the midpoint of each interval. Okay, so now my rectangles, though, are going to extend up to the middle of each interval. So notice in this case, again, my artistry is a little bad. If you were to have a good graph of 16 minus x squared, you would see on the left side you would get a little underestimate and on the right side of the interval you would get a little overestimate. So I think our midpoint approximation would be better than using say left endpoints or right endpoints. Um, but again that just really depends on the geometry, the shape of your function. Okay. Um, in general midpoints are will give you better approximations as a rule of thumb but there's certainly counterexamples to that. Well, again, everything's the same. We're still adding up areas of rectangles. Rectangle 1 plus rectangle 2 plus rectangle 3 plus rectangle 4. The only thing that's changed, the width is still the same. But to get the height, notice from the first interval, that's from 0 to 0.5. Well, the midpoint is going to give me the height of the function. So I would need to plug 0.25 in. My second rectangle, I would have 1 half times, I would take the midpoint which would be 0.75, so I'm writing too big here. Uh, rectangle 3 would have width 1 half. To get the height of it again, we would plug the midpoint in, or 1.25. And for the last rectangle, that's 1 half f of, now again, the last midpoint would be 1.75. And lastly, you would have to plug this in. This is where it would be real tedious. So 1 half, you would have to plug 0.25 into your function. So 16 minus 0.25 squared, whatever that is, plus 1 half, we plug 0.75 into our function. 16 minus 0.75 squared, <coughs> excuse me, plus 1 half. We need to plug 1.25 into our function to get the height of that third rectangle. 16 minus 1.25 squared. Last but not least, our fourth rectangle has width 1 half and 16 minus 1.75 squared. Again, whatever that works out to be. So <clears throat> these problems, again, are very tedious. Um, <clears throat> but the good thing is they're relatively straightforward. Um, if we used four rectangles and right endpoints, notice we would use the values 0.5, 1, 1 1.5, and 2 to get the heights of our rectangles. And in that case, it looks like it would, in fact, be an underestimate. So I hope this makes some sense. Sorry I didn't compute all the numbers for you. Um, you all can take a look at that. If you have any questions, uh, shoot me an email, and I'll try to sort it out for you. All right, good luck out there.